what's up y'all and welcome back to my channel so smashbox recently graced us with some new eyeshadow palettes and i picked up two of them these are the always on mood board palettes these are super cute they are tiny they are bright and fun and i'm excited to try these now they actually came out with four different color stories i just picked up the two that appealed to me but these are eight pan color stories they do retail for 39 dollars a piece that is a little bit on the pricey side for a smaller palette but i think it's right on par with smashbox and there's other brands out there releasing quads that are way more expensive than this so i'm excited to try these out i've never tried an eyeshadow from smashbox before their color stories have just never appealed to me is really all it is it, they do a lot of neutrals they didn't ever really do anything bright and fun maybe i missed them but just from what i saw that's what they had but these really caught my attention so let's run through the two that i picked up i will show you the other two that you have to choose from as well and then we're going to create a look with each one of these palettes so up first we have the bougie vibes palette and this is the color story that we have in here it is purple are we surprised that i picked this one up absolutely not but i love the variety in here this is definitely more of a neutral leaning purple eyeshadow the top row you have a lot more of like warm tone neutrals and then you have your pops of purples down here on the bottom row i also like the way that these are set up you can definitely break these down into two different quads give you two very pretty looks very easy very simple or of course you can do whatever you want there's no rules in makeup but the other one that i picked up is earthy vibes right here also i love that the packaging represents the color story on the inside i just want to throw a shout out to that but this is what earthy vibes looks like and i had only intended on picking up the one palette but this shade and this shade right here caught my attention this really pretty lime green shade and then we have this really pretty like satin metallic chartreuse shade right here i'm excited about this one i think it's absolutely beautiful again it is broken up into two different quads so if you're unsure what to do you can definitely do that or you can do whatever you want but the other two color stories that they released the first one is called cozy vibes and that one is going to be your true neutral palette it's not too warm leaning it's not too too cool tone leaning excuse me i got a little hiccup it is very neutral. And then the last one they released is called Fiery Vibes, and that is going to be your warm tone leading neutrals, a lot more of those red tones in it. Both are very beautiful, but like I said, these are the two that caught my attention. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom y'all in a little bit, prime my eyes, and we're gonna create a look with each one of these palettes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with Bougie Vibes. I'm really excited about this. I love the color story in here, and I wanna see if I can use a majority if not all of the shades in here we do have only three matte shades and then we have five shimmer so it may be a little bit more difficult but i'm going to go ahead and start with this shade up here this one is called oh it's one of those where the shade names are on the back so i'm thinking it's called claymate i'm assuming i could be wrong but it's the lightest shade in the palette so i'm going to pick that up with a singe beauty f03 brush and we're just going to start to pop this into my crease see how it performs how it's going to lay down is it really pigmented i want to know if these are going to patch and skip give me a lot of fallout i am going to wear these all day it is already like 1 30 in the afternoon so i won't get like a 12 hour wear out of them but just based off of probably the nine hours i'll get i'll be able to tell how the formula is going to wear that did go on really nicely. I like the pigmentation. It was very smooth to put on. It was easy to blend. It didn't grab or skip. Let me see what these feel like. These do feel very, very silky, so we like that. But let's move on to our next shade. So I'm gonna use the same brush, and I'm gonna go in with, I think, this one over here. These two are very close. Like, there's not a whole lot of depth difference, and there's slight tonal difference to them, but we're gonna start with this one right here. This one, I'm assuming, is called Coral Support. I could be wrong, but pretty sure that's what it's called. So I'm gonna pick that up on my same Singe Beauty um, F03, or E03 brush. And I'm going to put this one in to my crease, building up a little bit more depth and definition. And then I think I'm going to take that other matte that's very close to this one and put it on my lower lash line. 
Okay, so with a Singe Beauty EO2, I'm gonna go in to this shade right here. This one is either called Excessive or Wine Stain. I'm not exactly sure. That always confuses me with it when it's on the back because I never know how they intended the layout to be. But I'm gonna put this down here on my lower lash line. I'm just gonna fluff it down there and just add a little bit of depth. All right, so now that I have that on, I can definitely see a shade difference. The shade that I put on up here in my crease is definitely more of like a clay color, and the one that I put on on my lower lash line definitely has a little bit more of a purple shade to it. But let's go ahead and move on. So I wanna take this one right here and put it on my outer corner and build up a little bit of depth and drama. So for that, I'm gonna go in with a brush of some sort. Okay, we're gonna go in with this one from Singe. This is a Singe Beauty EO5 and I'm just going to pick up that shade. I don't know. I think that one's called Purple Rain. Pretty sure that's what it's called. It has to be, right? And I'm just going to tap this out here. Now, this is not going to be a super punchy shade because it is more of like a satin metallic, so it's not going to perform like a matte, but it is going to give me something out there, and that's what I want. All right, so that did give me some good depth and drama. I also took it down onto the very outer portion of my lower lash line as well, but I got a lot of fallout with that shade. I did go in pretty heavy handed because I was trying to build it up, but let's see if it's just going to brush away. So yes and no, my cheek is a little sticky from the highlighter that I have on. I have on the Ritual Defeat Creature of Light as my highlighter, which spoiler alert not a fan of this over powder it did lift everything so it kind of stuck to that but i'm thinking if i didn't have that on it probably would have brushed away i'll let y'all know in a future palette ranking video but let's go ahead and move on so i'll clean all that up in a minute let's do i think what i want to do i have four shimmers to play with so I don't think I'm gonna be able to use all of them. So I'm gonna do this shade right here, which is, I think this one's called Excessive. Looking at this one called Purple Rain, I'm pretty sure this is Excessive. So I'm going to put this one like all over my lid and then I'll probably put this one where the shimmer and the, I guess the satin meet. And then probably this for my inner corner, I don't think I'm gonna to get to this shade, but let's go ahead and start so i'm going to go ahead and prime my eye with my nyx glitter glue and then we're going to pop that onto my lid all right so i picked up that top shimmer shade called excessive and i'm going to pop this all over my lid and i'm going to bring it pretty far over i think i can actually squeeze all four of these shimmers on my lid so we're going to try but that's very pretty. It's just a good metallic shimmer, no flips, no sparkle or anything like that, but it did go on very smooth. It picked up really nicely, and I don't think it's accentuating texture on my lid. Maybe just a tiny bit right here, but I've had worse. Okay, so next I'm gonna go in with this shade down here, and I'm gonna pop this right here on my outer corner and just kind of make sure we have a good blend over here. All right, so next I'm gonna pick up this shimmer shade right here. This one is called Charge It, and I'm gonna put it on that little vacant space that I have on my lid, bringing it all the way over to my inner corner, but I'm not gonna bring it in to my inner corner. And last for my inner corner, I'm going to pick up this shade right here called Mellow Drama. This is my Singe Beauty EO1 brush. I am going to spray it with some MAC Fix Plus, and I'm going to pop this one into the inner corner of my lid. This is probably going to be a little bit too dark, but I'm kind of thinking it might be fine, actually. Yeah, I think it's going to be okay. Not quite as light as I want. I probably should have swapped those two shades, but it's still really pretty. 
All right, y'all, so that is going to complete our look with the Bougie Vibes palette. I do really like the way this turned out. I have a couple of thoughts. I will share those with you at the end of the video, but overall, I think it came out really pretty. I like the way everything performed. This is not going to be a super punchy, super pigmented in your face eyeshadow palette. It is definitely more on the softer side, but it is buildable. But just keep in mind that if you want something that's going to be very pigmented and in your face, these are probably not going to be it. But overall, I do really like this look. So to finish it off in my lower waterline, I went in with a NYX Epic Wear Liner. This is in the shade Fierce Purple. And then I lined my lid with my Urban Decay 24-7 Inks Liner in the shade Zero and threw on some of my City Beauty Beyond Mascara. Yes, that's the name of it. That just didn't sound right when it rolled off my tongue. But let's go ahead and jump into the second palette. So this is the Earthy Vibes palette. Again, I'm gonna try and use every single shade in here. We do have more mattes in this palette than we do shimmers and satins. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to create a look because this one we actually have five mattes, one shimmer, and two satin shades. So I think what I wanna do is I wanna put this on my inner corner. I'm dying to put that in there. So that is the shade Sublime, I'm pretty sure, based off of the other shade names. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one up with a Singe Beauty EO2 brush. I'm just gonna clean this off really quick. And I'm gonna pop this into my inner corner. I'm gonna give me a nice little pop in here and see what this can do. I love this kind of shade on my inner corner, that sort of neon shade. And I think it's really pretty. I am getting a ton of kick up in the pan with this shade, but I did go in really hard. So I didn't get that much kick up in the pan with the other palette, but I did get some. Love that. All right, so I think what I want to do next is go in to this shade right here. This one is called Instant Toffee, and I want to put that one in like the crease. I want to bring it all the way over to the outer corner and meet that shade on my inner corner. So I'm going to pick that up with a Singe Beauty EO2 brush. I just cleaned it off and we're going to pop this into my crease. I did get a lot of kick up with this one as well. So we'll see if I get a lot of fallout. Okay, so next I'm going to take my Singe Beauty EO3 brush and I'm going to go in to this shade up here. This one is called Rare Find. And what I want to do is I just want to fluff this right along the edge of that last shade that we put down. Kind of blend it out a little bit. Make sure we don't have any harsh lines and just give it a real seamless look. All right, so for the lower lash line, I'm gonna go in to this shade right here. This one is called Fine Point, and this is a Game Beauty EO7 brush, and I'm just gonna fluff this along my lower lash line. Nothing crazy, nothing precise, just very fluffed out, very whimsical. With a Singe Beauty EO4, I'm gonna go into this deep green shade over here. This one is called New Growth, and I'm gonna put this one on my outer corner, giving me some depth and definition, and I'm also gonna bring that down onto the outer portion of my lower lash line as well. All right, so my eye is primed and ready to go with my glitter primer. Let's go ahead and do some shimmer. So kind of what I'm thinking is this shade right here all over the lid, probably this on my outer corner where that matte and that shimmer come together. And then I wanna put this one right here on my inner corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this shade over here. This one is called Bombshell. I'm gonna pick that up on my finger and I'm just going to put this all over my lid, bringing it pretty far over to the inner corner, but obviously not all the way into it. Ooh, that one's really pretty. All right, so next I'm going to pick up this shade right here. This one is called Gold Mine, and I'm going to put this one right here, just in that outer little space where the matte and the shimmer meet. That's, ooh, I like that a lot. That's pretty. And then last but not least, I'm going to take my Singe Beauty EO1 brush and I'm going to go into this chartreuse shade right here called On the Horizon. I'm going to spray it with my MAC Fix Plus and we're going to pop this on the inner portion of my lid and bring it over to my inner corner. And here we have the final look with the Earthy Vibes palette. I love this look. 
I think it's absolutely beautiful. That chartreuse and that lime green on the inner corner are everything. This is so beautiful. I think I like this one more than I like this one. And that's a rarity for me to say that I like a green more than a purple, but it is what it is. This is beautiful. But let me show you what I used to finish up this look really quick before we chat about these palettes because I have thoughts. So in my lower waterline, I went in with an LA Girl liner. This is a pastel dream liner in the shade Magic Mint. And then I lined my lid with my Lancome, what is it? The Edol Ultra Precise Waterproof Liner. This is in the shade Matte Syrup Brown. And then I went in with my brown YSL Lash Clash Mascara as well to finish off this look. But let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit and we need to chat. All right, so let's go ahead and chat about the packaging first, and then we'll talk about the palettes separately because I have individual thoughts on each one of these. So first of all, I like the packaging. I think it's cute, it's slim, it is very sleek. This doesn't feel cheap, but it also doesn't feel super luxe either. It just feels like good packaging. And I like that we have these sort of colored X's on the front of them. So when you store your palettes like this, you can see what you're grabbing for without having to open them up. My only gripe with the packaging is that these shade names Names are printed on a sticker on the back of the palettes that feels very cheap very afterthought to me I don't understand why a brand like Smashbox would do that because let's be honest they have the money we do have the space in these palettes to print it and it always confuses me how the shade names line up with the shades on the inside of the palette that might be just a me thing but it confuses me so let's go ahead and start with the Bougie Vibes palette. This is the one that I was most excited about. This is the one that first caught my eye. And first of all, I didn't realize that there was only three mattes in this palette. When I was looking at it online, I thought there was four. I thought this was a matte. That's my own fault. I didn't read the description, but I wish we had four mattes because after getting a closer look at it, we have three matte shades up here. This one is a lighter matte, teetering on being a mid-tone, depending on your skin tone. And then you have these two mid-tones right here that are so close to being the same shade. It wasn't necessary for both of them, especially when you're only dealing with eight shades. We needed more variety, and I wish we had that. And if we had, it would have made this palette so much better. But as far as the formula goes, I didn't have any issues with the mattes in here. They blended nicely. They went on really nicely. They're not super pigmented they are very much so on the light side but they are buildable so you can absolutely build them up to what you see in the pan it's just going to take a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of patience but like I said, I didn't get patching, skipping, or fallout. I did get some with this shade right here, but I treated it like a matte, and it's a satin shade, so that's my own fault. But I do really like the shimmer shades in here. I think the formula is really nice. It felt very creamy on my finger. It didn't feel gritty or, like, dry. They went on very nicely. It didn't emphasize any texture on my lid. I thought it was going to, but that was my lid stuck together from the glitter primer, so... That's my own fault, but overall, I think this is a really pretty color story. I just think it could have been better. Like it's a little underwhelming once you get in and start to play with it. So I think there's other purple palettes out there that are better, especially like if you go into ColourPop, even the one that I just played with from Tarte, I think is better. And that one is a little bit more, but ColourPop's a little bit more on the more affordable side. So just kind of shop around and see if this is going to be a formula that's going to fit into your preferences and your makeup tastes. So let's chat about the Earthy Vibes palette because this one surprised me. I ended up loving this one more than I thought I was going to. And I think it's because we have a more variety of the mattes in here. We get five mattes and three shimmers in this palette and I absolutely love that. If I'm gonna have a palette that has both mattes and shimmers in it, I definitely want it to be more matte heavy because I feel like that's where your variety comes. So we have this lighter shade up here. Again, teetering on a mid-tone, but at the same time, it's light enough that I can work with it. You have two mid tones in this one but they are different they are not the same shade and then we have this dark forest green and this beautiful lime green that you can use as your pop of color inner corner lower lash line the options are endless and I love that I also love that we have three shimmers in here but they are three very different shimmers so again it gives you a lot more variety I really enjoy the shimmer shade in this palette I didn't have any issues with them with fallout with 
patching, with grabbing, with emphasizing texture on my lid. I didn't have any issues picking them up on my finger or with a brush. And the same for the matte. I didn't have any issues with them either, except for the exception of this one right here, which I'll tell you in just a minute. The rest of them went on really nicely. They blended out really nicely. I didn't have any issues building up the pigmentation. These ones don't seem to be quite as lightly pigmented as the ones in this shade. They're not going to be an indie shadow that's going to give you that bam moment right out the gate, but they are a little bit more on the pigmented side. But like I said, this shade right here did give me a little bit of trouble. So it was fine when I packed it on, but the issue came when I tried to blend it out with a fluffy brush. It wanted to kind of patch and skip just a little bit. It didn't want to blend out very well. It kind of wanted to disappear into itself. But when I went back in and packed it on some more and then took this shade along the edges, it did just fine. So something to keep in mind, it's a little bit of a finicky formula not the easiest to work with so if you are a beginner with makeup this may not be the perfect choice for you but overall I think these are nice I think these are a good release from the brand but I think the formula is just kind of mediocre I don't think it's anything to write home about I don't think it's a bad formula it's just not anything that's going to stick out in the back of my mind it's not anything that makes me want to go out and pick up the other two palettes from this collection or really pay too much attention to what they bring out in the future so do with that information what you will. That's my personal opinion, and that's going to be my review for now. I will continue to test these out in other capacities, make other looks with them, and I'll let y'all know my full final thoughts in a future um, palette ranking video, but that's going to complete this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. Did you pick up any of these? Have you used Smashbox eyeshadows in the past? I feel like I've never really heard a lot about Smashbox eyeshadows, so I was really curious about them but also let me know which palette and which look was your favorite let's have that conversation light up that comment section and as usual i want to thank you all so much for watching my video and spending your time with me it truly does mean so so much to me and if you like this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up before you leave don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so that you can be notified of all my future posts here on my channel i do post quite a few videos every single week and i wouldn't want you to miss one but until my next video have a good one. Bye.